God's very clear that what He's called us to do requires courage. And uh, when we lose courage, I think we lose everything. You know, vision and dreams and strategies are important, but if we lose courage, we kind of lose it all. And I think we've got to keep contending. One of the prophetic words of my life from a very small, yeah, yeah, as a small boy at a very young age has always been this, be strong and courageous. Joshua chapter 1, be strong and courageous. To be honest, I often used to think that means I should shout louder, I should be more, do more, uh, and be heard more. But actually I realize more and more that courage is not something you do more of. It's possibly more of God in us and us doing less. Not about ourselves, but being strong in God and being courageous to, to stay the course and to walk into the bigness of what God has for us. And if you have a Bible, I'm going to ask you quickly just to turn with me uh, to the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 5, a great text. And uh, in Joshua chapter 6, we often go to, and I certainly do, when it talks about taking Jericho, the most fortified city. Uh, there was no way in and no way out. But actually, it starts in Joshua's, Joshua chapter 5, the taking and the fall of Jericho. And, and so I want to just use a few scriptures there just to remind us of some great truth that gives us courage before I get to some of the practicals of how we can be more courageous and the commands he gives us for courage. But in Joshua chapter 5 in verse 13, in the heading being the fall of Jericho, it says, Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and he saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword. And Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Again, an incredible picture we see here. Uh, I guess many of us are not used to uh, seeing a man with a drawn sword because we don't go to battle like these guys used to. But in a day that, that Joshua was facing, the, he was out praying, I believe. He was out as a good leader strategizing. His people, the, the Israelites were, uh, I guess, resting. But as a leader, as a soldier and as a shepherd, he was out there car obviously carrying some burden and realizing there's this fortified city that awaits us we don't know how we're going to take out the city. We don't know how we're going to defeat the city as part of God's plan. But we're not sure how we're going to do that. Carrying the weight and responsibility. And he was out there. And while he's out there, just scoping the scene, it, was, it shows us, he sees this man with a drawn sword. Now, in battle times, when a man has a drawn sword, what that means is that man is there to fight. And so, uh, being a good leader, a man of courage, I guess, and a man of intrigue, he walks over to this man and he asks him the question, that is an important one. Are you for us or for our enemies? And I love the response of this man. He says in verse 14, Neither. <laughs> I, 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 I'm shocked by that response. Neither. It's not a politician who he was talking to. This was Jesus Christ. And he was not... Uh, the point was being made here was that I'm not here to take your side and I'm not here to take their side. I'm not here to take sides. I'm here to take over because this is my battle, not yours. And I think that is so strategic and so important. So let's read on. It says, Neither, he replied, but as the commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come down. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence. This is how we know this was not an angel, because we don't worship angels. If it was an angel, uh, then Joshua would have stopped worshiping and now bowing down, and the angel would have said, Stand up. But actually, the, the, the theologians show us and tell us that this was Jesus Christ himself as the commander of the army of the Lord. He was standing there. And when Joshua heard that, that I didn't come here to two sides, I've come here to take over. This is my battle. It says he fell to his knees and he worshipped. And this is what he said and asked him, What message does the Lord have for his servant? And verse 15, the commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals. For the place where you're standing is holy. And Joshua did so. And so again, without trying to kind of play on words here, it's an interesting notion for us to be understand again that, that Jesus was telling Joshua that I'm not here to take your side and you're not, I'm not on your side. Actually, I'm here to take over and you're on my side. Which changes everything, friends. If you and I are truly going to be a people who walk in courage and understand courage, we've got to understand this battle is not our battle. What we give ourselves to is not ours. We're not hoping God's in what we're doing. God's saying, you're on my side. And so it's a good question to ask ourselves. Are we still on God's side? Not, are we doing our thing and hoping God's in it? Not, are we kind of fulfilling some mission and trusting God's with us? 
We love to quote, if God be for us, who can be against us? And that's a great truth. But this is not, is God for us? This is, are we for God? Are we still on God's side? And, and I've been asking myself that question many times, even for the churches that we're involved in, the team that I lead, NCMI, I'm asking, are we still on God's side? Not, are we doing our thing and trusting God is for us? And it's a good thing, because when you get to understand again, you're still on God's side, then, friends, we're going to have courage and understand. And I think it's an incredible, incredible truth to, to be reminded of that. The battle belongs to the Lord, and the question the Lord keeps asking is, are we still on His side? He's got this, yes. It's His battle, yes. We're part of it, yes. But it's His battle. He's in control, and He's not backing us. We're backing what He's doing and getting on board with that. And so I love the notion of Him falling to His knees and worshipping in reverence and fear. And taking it. the command was, take off your shoes. Your sandals, why you're standing on holy ground. Why? Because what I've called you to is not a good idea. This thing is, is, is a, it's reverence. It's a, it's, a, it's a God thing. It's a divine thing, not a man thing. And I think it's important for us to remind of the, what we're involved in is a God thing. It's a divine thing. It's not an our thing. And we're hoping God's in it. We know other texts like this. In Exodus chapter 3, the exact same thing happened there with uh, Moses, with a burning bush, as you and I know the story well. And Moses is taking care of the sheep. You can read it in Exodus chapter 3. And there he sees this bush on fire, but it's not burning. And so he walks over to it to have a look at it. And he gets this command, take off your shoes, you're standing on holy ground. In Isaiah chapter 6, another great text, in the year that King Uzziah died. Again, I'm highlighting this truth because it's so important for us to understand. If we're going to truly have courage, we've got to know that what we're involved in is a God thing and we're backing what God's doing. And we need that divine revelation in everything we do because that's what will give us courage. And so in Isaiah 6, as you know the story, the King Uzziah had died. It was a down time, it was a difficult time for the region and for the place. And as a prophet... Isaiah the prophet, what was his job? As a prophet to declare the word of God. So he needed to hear God's word to declare it. But it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Interesting, he didn't get a word from God. He saw God. God revealed himself. And he said, I saw the Lord seated high and exalted. And his train filled the temple. And he says, I fell to the ground. and said, woe to me, for I'm a man of unclean lips. Uh, of unclean Lips and I live with those who are unclean, and my eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. And then there's this commission where he, he, his, he, the, the angel came and touched his lips and made him clean. And then the call came: Who will go for us, and who can we send? And Joshua, uh, Isaiah said, "Here are my Lord, send me." So again, it was this divine call, friends, that that God wanted him to see God first, not just get on with the task. But to come back to the place, this is a God thing. This is a, 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 a reverence thing that we've got to stand in awe and understand it's a divine thing. And out of that, the whole of Isaiah's message changed from not woe to you, but actually woe is me because I'm carrying the glory of God. And I think it's a great understanding again for us who are in any ministry, any leadership, doing what it is God's called us to do. We also know in the New Testament, probably our most quoted text uh, is out of Matthew chapter 28 with the whole... Great Commission, the call of Jesus when he brought his disciples together and he gave them this great commission to go make disciples of all nations. We often start in verse 18 of Matthew 28, but in verse 16 it actually says, When they saw Jesus, they fell and worshipped him. And some doubted, and then this commission came. And the point I want to make is that this great commission came from a place of worship and a place of reverence and honor. As they worshipped Him, He commanded them and commissioned them. And again, I believe it's because Jesus wanted them to know, this isn't a good thing, go do your thing. This is a God thing. This is a divine thing. And it's out of that place of worship, out of that place of awe, out of that place, this is a God thing that gives us courage and it keeps us motivated in what it is God's called us to do. So, don't neglect the divine uh, element of what you and I are being called to, what we're involved in, whether it be small, where no one knows about it, or whether it be a big ministry, or whatever we're doing, friends, there's a divine nature to this thing. And it's vital for us to remember so we can be strong and courageous in it. You know, when we, when we lose the divine nature, we actually lose the value of the significance of what we're doing. And everything we do, it kind of be, gets limited to us and our thing. But, but when we keep the divine nature and understand that everything we do is for God, about God, it's on His side, it gives us value. And it keeps God's call pure, which is what's so needed, even when we're called to be a courageous people. It keeps it God's. When we lose the divine element of what we are part of, you know what happens? And this is so evident in the church today. Man's needs become more important than God's glory, which is tragic. 
Because it's about the glory of God, not just the, man, the needs of man. When we lose the divine element of what we've been called to, our strategy becomes a result of human observation rather than revelation. Let that sink in, friends. That too many of us are responding to human observation rather than divine revelation. And maybe as the church or as followers of Jesus or in ministry, we're busy with good stuff, but it doesn't make it God's stuff because we are observing the needs of rather than getting revelation from God for what we should give in ourselves to. And that's important for us. I also want to say that, that when we lose the divine nature of what we've been called to, this is tragic, but we begin to magnify the minister or the gift or the, the person at the expense of the master or the giver of the gift. And that is so evident in the church today. May we not be a part of that. May we fix that. May we get our eyes fixed back on the revelation of Christ. And we make much of Him and we honor the gift, but we glorify the giver of the gift, who is Jesus Christ. Also, that when we lose the divine nature of what we've been called to, our mission, what we're involved in, really has no roots, no long-lasting fruit. But when it's based on the revelation of Christ and the understanding this is a divine thing, what we've been called to, and we're not on, He's not on our side, we're on His side, it actually gives us fruit, long-lasting fruit. And what we're doing has roots that are going to last for eternity. And so again, those are some things, but I want to just say again, we on his side, he's not on our side. And the question is, are we still on his side doing what it is he's called us to do? That was the question that he challenged um, Joshua with in a season of taking a, a, a city that was untakeable, but God's strategy came from a place of worship. And that's when God gave him in Joshua chapter 6, how he will take the city, that he must do this and God will do this. But it didn't come from a podcast. It didn't come from a, a, a book. It came from him on his knees, recognizing the commander of the army of the Lord, speaking to him. And I still believe there's some of that for us today, where God wants to speak and give us courage to take cities and take regions. And, uh, but it's going to come back to that place of worship, friends, and also understanding this is God's thing, not our thing. And we need to keep it like that.